Dr. Tal, uh, <laughs> hello everyone. Uh, you're welcome to join us today. We're honored to have Dr. Tala from Syria to share us a course about his new endodontic kit. And uh, here we'd like to uh, show our thanks to all of dealers for, for their hard work in spreading uh, this product. And also we show our thanks to all of dentist friends who are interested in this new project. And we also Thank you all of you for your trust and support to Woodpecker. So now we're going to have a brief introduction to Dr. Tala. Uh, Dr. Tala is a, a professor of endodontics and restorative dentistry at Syrian Damasco, uh, uh, Aisham Universities, and National Dental Center for Syrian Board. He has authored and published many articles and books uh, and Dr. Tal uh, Dr. Tala is also an international speaker, and he has practiced limited to microscopic endodontics uh, in Damascus, Dubai, uh, and Abu Dhabi, and so on. So that's all of introduction to the Dr. Tala. So now it's a time for us to enjoy the amazing show from Dr. Tala. So welcome, Dr. Tala. Hi everyone, can you hear me now? I'm sorry for this connection problem on Friday. Sorry for this. Just uh, any confirmation from anyone that you can hear me? I'm sorry for this again. Uh, it's an unexpected connection error. And it usually happens, no problem. But I just need anything from you, Osborne, just to confirm that you can hear me. Okay, any con 
keep going okay okay so i will share my screen now yes we can hear you thank you very much okay just again can you see the screen uh i hope that everything is nice before starting thanks for everyone now is following my presentation just I want to be sure that you can see the screen. I will be waiting. You know, so there's some delay. Uh, okay, I think. Again, can you can you confirm Osborne that that you can see the screen before starting, my friend? Okay, again, I'm just waiting for the final confirmation from anyone that you can see the screen. Okay. Okay, it's 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 nice. I, I I will be waiting for any any uh, comments if you can if you uh, were not able to see the presentation thanks for everyone i would like to thank woodbaker for this nice opportunity to be with you here today in order Okay, can, I think you can see me now. I will share the screen again. Sorry for this again. I will share the screen. I hope that you can see. Sorry again for this inconvenience. I don't know what happened today. Everything in the test was working perfectly, but now it's not as well. I think it's working now. I hope that it will continue till the end of the presentation. Thanks for everyone. Keep staying, waiting for my presentation. Uh, I would like again to thank uh, Woodbaker for for giving me this opportunity in order to make the official launch of the ultrasonic tip. Uh, okay, Osborne, uh, why we are using ultrasonics? Why we get into the era of ultrasonics? We have to understand 
something very important that nowadays minimally invasive endodontics is very important in order to preserve our natural teeth. It is not good to do a root canal treatment, which is perfectly done, uh, very nice white line reaching the apex, but we don't have sufficient to structure in order to withstand the forces. So uh, according to literature, uh, the working end of any or tips are almost typically 10 times smaller than the smaller available round burst, or at least it can perform in cutting efficiency. This is what uh, is meant to be to make less removal of the tooth structure. This was the main idea of the use of ultrasonics in order to preserve more tooth structure and also in order to make the practice of endo more easy. If we go and we want to start to, to, to use ultrasonic tips in our practice, we will find a huge variety of ultrasonics everywhere. So many metals, so many designs, diamond coated, non-diamond coated, different materials, all in the market. So we will get confused. We want to know what to use. So many tips, we just want to minimize the amount of tips that we can use in order to make the practice more easy and less time consuming. From here, the idea came to me in order to collect a sum ultrasonic tips that can do most of endodontic uh, uh, procedures. We know that the, the less amount of tips we're going to have, the more uses they can uh, apply, we will have better practice for us. And uh, I had the uh, chance to visit and I was invited by uh, Woodbaker Company in 2009. And actually, I visited the company and I was actually surprised with the quality level. They are working on it and I decide to cooperate with them. And then it start all from 2009 and it took us about two years from developing and working, uh, trying to give the best product in order to uh, make the practice more easier. Till the birth of the Dr. Talal Indo Kit, which was launched uh, two weeks before, and it contains uh, the uh, ultrasonic tips that I'm going to speak about them today and about their clinical uses during our daily uh, practice. They are six ultrasonic tips with different designs, with different materials. Uh, they can perform up to 80 to 90 percent of our daily endodontic uh, uh, practice that is needed. It contains of wrench, it contains the, the six U file, the six tips and six uh, ultrasonic tips with the QR code that you can follow the, the, the videos, the clinical videos in order to know how to use the tips in a, a better way. But at, before starting, it's a very important for us to understand that these tips, they cannot perform on our ultrasonic scaler, which is on the dental units. You have to use a special ultrasonic devices. They can provide a, a, a considerable amount or a level of power that can uh, be uh, sufficient for each tip. And of course, you can find in the user manual the recommended power for each tip in order to use it with a, a less uh, uh, potential for uh, ultrasonic tip uh, package. It has to have uh, 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 an endodontic function. So you can use uh, DTE, you can use Woodbaker according to the uh, uh, compatibility that we are also going to speak about. But it has to have, uh, as I told you, an endodontic uh, option not to produce too much power, not to have any separation or package of the ultrasonic tip. And another very important rule you have to follow before start. I, I will start with four important rules in before starting to use the ultrasonics. That uh, the second rule that you have to gradually increase your ultrasonic powers. Whenever you start drilling, always, always start with the minimum power that you can uh, apply and you can increase the power of your ultrasonic tip accordingly, according to the application you are applying. And uh, if the, you find the tip is not working properly, so you can add, uh, uh, increase, but gradually. And also you have to understand that you, in the kits, you have many tips. You have larger diameter, you have smaller diameter, but the, the rule also, the larger the diameter, the higher the power that you can apply 
And on the other hand, you have to pay attention that it will be more aggressive and it will remove more to structure and it will work, of, of course, in the coronal part. But the smaller the tip diameter you have, the lower the power you can apply or support for the tip and the less amount of to structure will be removed and it will be more suitable for working in the uh, apical, more apically area. On another or fourth uh, rule you have to follow is you have to activate it with pulses. It is not recommended to keep activating the ultrasonic for a long time. This will create a fracture for the ultrasonic tips. So you use time pulses between one to two seconds, three to five seconds. Uh, each tip has, has its uh, uh, special recommendation in order to work properly. And of course, you have to check the compatibility of your ultrasonic tip. If you are using the DTE, if you have, if are you having the DTE ultrasonic tip, so it is compatible with Action. Uh, and if you have the Woodbaker uh, ultrasonic tip, it's compatible with EMS. Both versions are available from the kit uh, uh, according to the ultrasonics that you have. Because if you apply, for example, the Woodbaker version on an Action or Satellite or DTE, it will not uh, uh, perform it will not act properly and you will be frustrated you will think that the tip is not working but actually the problem is in compatibility so it's very important to check this and for that we name the tips that we have t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 and t6 for the uh, the tips that are compatible with woodbaker and the td1 for the tips are and for the TD6, the tips are compatible with satellite or DTE. So it's very important to differentiate between the names of the tips in order to have more a proper uh, practice in your daily endodontics. Now we will start tip by tip and to check the properties of each tip and what can what does this tip can do. Starting from T1, as you can see, the T1 ultrasonic tip, actually, it consists of two parts. The first part will be the holder, the ultrasonic holder we will that will be attached to the uh, handpiece. And the other part will be the ultrasonic file. And I choose the size of the file, size 30, and the taper 2%. And that's why, uh, because I need to cut... I need to use the cutting efficiency, good cutting efficiency for the file. On the other hand, longer durability because the smaller the U files, the, the more the potential for package, the larger, the less potential for the package. But if I choose more than 30, it will block the vision and it will not get cut precisely in certain areas. And also the, 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 the angle of the angulation of the holder is about 120 degrees because I don't want it to block the vision vision and uh, also something that will help you in not blocking the vision is bending the U file. Let me say something about the ultrasonic files that were introduced previously as a history. At the beginning, they were introduced as a stainless steel with the ISO uh, sizes in order to uh, instrument the canal. But you know, they are aggressive and they make a lot of ledges. Then they will start using them for irrigation activation. And they found it that they can separate into the canal and they will cause more uh, complication. But actually, these are not, and for that, they shift for the U files that are for uh, night high. Uh, full activation, but also they found it that it will create ledges into the canal. After that, they shifted for the smooth tips in order to activate. Because of this, they stopped to use the U-files, but actually they are very precious, uh, precious and they can be used in so many clinical applications. They are not for filing the canal, they are for removing blockage from the beginning of the canal till the uh, area that you can see while you are practicing. So for that, it is very important to use it and very important features also is that you can bend it. You can bend it because it's made of stainless steel. You, it's bendable and whenever you bend it, you will be able to direct it to the area of action. You want to remove the area of calcification or blockage into the root canal. The size is 30 and the taper is 2%. It's bendable so you can get benefits. I will give you some clinical Examples like this case when the patient came to me was referred because of the blockage in the median root, as you can see. And we all know that after pulpotomy with certain materials, some calcification will start in the coronal area and the calcification will start coronally 
and will go in the apical direction. So if we have the chance to remove the calcification, we can see the calcification and to remove them, and it will be very good. As you can see here, this is uh, illustrating this color, illustrating the uh, calcification at the coronal part in the mesiolingual canal and it has to be removed maybe one or two millimeters will be enough in order to get the orifice of the canal like what you are going to see but it's very important also to bend your u5 or the t1 ultrasonic tip in many directions to be able to direct you can see this is the the t1 the tip you can see it's uh, sharp it, it, it can be directed till the area of action, as you can see here, and I can do with a swimming motion as if I am bending, as if I am trying to remove the calcification. And please note the multidisciplinary curves that you can make it with the stainless steel thanks to stainless steel material and thanks to the cutting efficiency that you can direct. And then after that, I was able to remove the one to two millimeters of calcification in the coronal area until I get the catch from the beginning to the canal and I was able to continue the instrumentation without further you can see that I was able to work on the coronal part using the T1 ultrasonic tip by directing getting benefits of the direction of the tip because it's stainless steel another application that we can drill all around the broken files we know that we have so many techniques in order to remove the broken file, whether it's loop technique, whether it's ultrasonics or grasping technique. Regardless, we have to drill all around, uh, sometimes from one side, sometimes all around, according to the technique. It's not our topic today, but you can use the tip of the T1 in order with the recommended uh, forces that you can see here in order to remove and then to catch the file and to remove it according to the technique. Some short uh, K files or Headstrom files uh, or Lentulo, you can also remove them with the aid of the T1 because they will be vibrated easily and they can be removed as well. On the other hand, also, whenever we are trying to remove a fiber boost, we understand that the fiber boost is difficult to be removed, but differentiating the colors of the fiber will help us in order to direct the tip of T1. As you can see here, I'm directing the tip with uh, swimming motion and then with pulses. Then after that, I need to minimize the heat accumulated after activation because I don't want to, to raise too much the, the, the temperature of the BDL. And you can see we continue uh, irrigating, we remove the debris, and then we irrigate again, and we can get the use to see how much is paper point, how much is left till we can reach the lovely color of Gataberka, indicating that we removed entirely the fire boss and we can go for retreatment. Another third application for the T1, is sometimes we are facing in retreatment cases obturated with only a sealers like zinc oxide eugenol, like uh, red Russian based, and they are coronally very hard to be penetrated. So using the T1 ultrasonics will help us in order to break the, uh, the, 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 the sealers and we will be able to try to go with our hand files and to remove them and to reach the end of our uh, uh, canal. As you can see here, uh, the canal was filled with red Russian and I used the T1. I directed again. T1, very important. You have to direct to bend it. Sometimes you bend it in many directions and you direct the tip of the uh, stainless steel ultrasonic file to the area of action and start to do like a sweeping motion in order to break the cement to penetrate into the uh, root canal. Uh, in the kit, you have also a box of six uh, U-file stainless steel. So the, the T1, or, or actually, whenever it breaks, because it may break if you use higher uh, power settings, if you use uh, time pulses for longer time pulses, it will break. So you can replace it with another uh, U-file. Again, they are in the same kit the second tip which is t2 ultrasonic tip and the t 
uh, two is used for two uh, very important issues in irrigation, which they are called active irrigation and irrigation activation. If I want to differentiate between the both of two actions, I have to understand something very important. That while we are instrumenting our root canal, we are creating so much debris. Uh, sometimes when we are you doing the retreatment, a lot of gataberka on the walls. We go by irrigating our canal with sodium hypochlorite and start to activate the sodium hypochlorite. Actually, there will be some physical barriers on the walls has to be removed first. The remover of this dust, the remover of this debris or the remaining of gataberka on the walls can be removed with the uh, benefits of active irrigation. And when uh, I um, uh, can add the water flow from the tip of the T2, I can remove most of the debris from the canal. Now I can use the irrigant solution, and after that I can activate the irrigant solution. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to disinfect the debris. I need to remove the debris first, by active irrigation, then to uh, disinfect the canal using the irrigation activation. As you can see, the T2 tip, it has the water supply area. The size is about 0.3. The taper is zero. And this taper is zero will give it, and it is the smooth, will give it a flexibility. So it can go with the curves of the canal. It will not harm the walls, of course, if you use it properly. But if you insist to go on the walls, of course, it's at the end of the day metal. So you have to be uh, careful and practice wisely. So it's flexible. And this is one of the most important features of this T2 ultrasonic tip. Again, we can use it for active irrigation and you can use it for irrigation activation. Let's see some clinical cases. This is the active irrigation. I have to understand that the power setting is very important. You have to adjust the power setting for two to maximum four. If you increase the power setting, it will not deliver the, the irrigation. So in order to get active irrigation, minimize the power setting. After instrumentation, we will have debris. Before trying to disinfect the canal, please remove the debris by active irrigation. Of course, you can have the saline or buffer water, buffering water. So this is the active irrigation. We are removing the debris from the walls of the canal. Then now we are irrigating. Now we irrigate the walls of the canal, inside the canal, with the irrigation tip. And here I am using the irrigation activation. Here I stop the flow of the water. I increase the power setting till 6, sometimes till 8. But please use pulses. You can see the pulses I'm using here. It is not more than 2 to 3 seconds of time pulses with up and down motion. Very important to use the up and down motion to activate the uh, sodium hypochlorite inside or the irrigant solution inside the uh, canal. And as you can see, this is the flexibility of the tip in order to go inside the canal. After obturating, after doing uh, partial obturation with warm vertical obturation, the, the walls of the canal will be dirty from the sealer so i can also clean the walls of the canal by active irrigation as you can see up and down again the power setting will be two to four not more than this up and down motion delivery open the water supply opens the saline you can be you will be imagined uh, you will be surprised how it will make the canal clean you will get benefits of irrigation and the same time activation so you will remove by active irrigation. So very important to use these two features of the T2 tip. The T3 tip, actually, it is uh, used for canal orifice opening after punctuation and the uh, refinement and other uh, uses I'm going to describe now. The design of it contains of a 12 micro washers. Uh, and uh, it is strong and durable and the tip size is about 0.6 millimeter and it has a special tip design you can use it in order to to uh, uh, make the bulb chamber opening or the axis opening more conservative and i'm focusing on on this especially on the premolar you can see this clinical case with distal caries requiring a root canal treatment again let's magnify and let's see the very important tissues that you have to preserve while you are opening your access cavity. Usually, we are opening our access cavity with the use of high speed. By this, 
Sometimes we are removing too much from the very cervical dentine, uh, threatening the potential for a fracture, especially in the premolar. So can we make the access as small as practical without further removal of the very cervical dentine? On the same time, I will be able to do the root canal treatment. First of all, the, the bulb chamber has to be open, penetrated. The tip will not go like the bird to penetrate the bulb chamber. First of all, the bulb chamber has to be penetrated like this. And after that, I can use it. Uh, and this is was the cause of the, uh, the reversible pitus. We have cracks and the caries. And then, as I told you, we can enter from this penetration, this hole, and to use the T3 ultrasonic tip. And we can increase the power up to 8, up to 10 if you need, because it is strong and it can withstand and I need good cutting efficiency. Here I'm using 10 power setting. And as you can see, I'm going lingually. Uh, I'm trying to not to remove too much to structure. As you can see, because it's ultrasonic performing with a special design, it is uh, not removing too much to structure mesially and distally. Don't forget always to use the coolant in order not to elevate the temperature of the of the uh, tooth structure. And here I am doing refinement. I am trying to smooth the walls of the uh, bulb chamber after complete removal. And I can direct my hand in order to minimize the removal buccally and lingually. And you can see how precise the access cavity was done only using the T3. And it didn't prevent proper instrumentation and obturation. And also, you, you will understand you that uh, because the axis is preserving to structure, we will need to use sm small brushes in order to insert the bonding agent into the uh, axis cavity when I'm performing the final uh, uh, restoration. And I can inject my uh, smart dentine replacement or my flowables. Then I will continue doing the layering for my composite. And here you can see the post obturation and you can see how much precise, how much conservative was the axis cavity using the T3 without removing further removal from the very cervical dentine without influencing the instrumentation because at the end of the day if the access cavity was very small and it will prevent the proper instrumentation it's contraindicated to keep it small we have to enlarge it as small as needed as uh, as much as needed and keep it as small as a practical Sometimes you can see here that I find that I have a dark line. I suspect the presence of middle mesial canal. Here you can use the T3 in order to remove the soffit, the, the, the shelf of the, rump, the remaining part of the bulb chamber, and you can uh, refine the wall perfectly. And again, you can see how much I'm using the coolant. When you are performing, when you are working and you are seeing, you don't use the cooling, the coolant. But after 10 seconds to 20 seconds, you have to use the coolant in order to minimize the heat. And then you will dry again. Uh, another application also, if you have a huge calcification of the bulb chamber, the T3 works perfectly in the coronal part. You can use it. But again, I have to emphasize very important issue. Uh, magnification is very important. Uh, you can use the loops. You will, because nowadays dentistry, we are not accepting, we are accept no more the blinded dentistry. We have to see, to be, and to understand more how to use uh, or to perform endodontics in, in a better way. So uh, it is good to use the loops. And as you can see, to focus more on this X-ray of the upper first molar, which was suffering from bulb necrosis, as you can see, by magnific magnification of the X-ray, you can see that the uh, uh, bulb chamber was totally filled with a bulb, a huge bulb stone. If I don't realize this, I will keep using the high speed till I will reach the forcation area and maybe I will end up with a perforation. So it's very important to understand this from the very beginning. Here, once I can create, I can see that there's a penetration in the bulb chamber, I will start using the T3 because it is, um, as I told you, strong 
and it can withstand high power settings as you can see on the other hand so it will be powerful in order to remove the huge calcification go circumferentially at the beginning circumferentially will try to try to support to separate the huge calcification from the canal walls in order to make it more weak and to break it in more pieces. Again, don't forget to cool it between each application, 10 to seconds application, please use again the water. We don't want to elevate the temperature of the tooth structure, especially if the patient was anesthetized. So you will harm the BDL. And we know exactly that according to Zach and Cohen and their famous study, if you elevate the uh, temperature of the BDL 10 seconds for more than one minute, you will create uh, uh, undesirable changes in the BDL. So here again, I can see, now I can differentiate between the color of the forcation, which it, it is dark, and the color of the calcification in the, uh, the coronal part, which is yellow. And also I can direct the T3 in all the direction because this calcification is covering the mesiopacal canal. If I think that I have all, almost removed everything, and I, will, I, I didn't catch the, the orifice of the mesiopacal canal, maybe I will end up with perforation. Again, cooling in order to, to minimize the heat. You can see how I am breaking this huge bulb stone, this is a huge calcification in two parts. I started from uh, all around circumferential, I removed the great mass of the material, then I am now refining I'm removing the, remo the remaining calcification in the bulb chamber in order to, to see the bulb floor map, which is very important to tell me, to direct me to the canal orifices in order to see the canals orifices well to make the negotiation of the case. And at the end, you can see how precise it was and how uh, the furcation was preserved without any additional removal in this dangerous area and this helped us to do the complete the root canal of the kiss so it's very important to use them whenever you can see the huge calcification in this area also we can use them to lose some metallic uh, uh, screws but before removing the metallic screw with the t3 you have to understand very important issue that you need to remove all the obstacles covering the screw in order to make the removal more easy. Uh, otherwise, the removal will be very difficult and it will consume too much time. So the removal of the cement all around is very important. Whenever you can see the screw is exposed, you can start to use the uh, power of the ultrasonic power of the uh, T3 ultrasonic tip in order to make contraclockwise motion uh, until we can lose. And we can increase the power gradually. If you can see that the screw is not responding, you can increase the power gradually till you can find it uh, rotating contraclockwise. Of course, you can see it clockwise because you are, can see indirect vision, but you have to uh, rotate it contraclockwise in order to remove it at the end. The T4 ultrasonic tip, which uh, consists of ball, diamond ball shaped uh, with 90 micro, uh, micro uh, tip uh, coated with diamond coated they have very good visual uh, 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 visibility because the, the shank is narrow but the tip is about 0.9 millimeter so you can bend it also you can direct it to the area of action most uh, useful are the bulb stones. Uh, the previous case was a huge bulb stone co covering the uh, entirely the bulb chamber. For that, we use the T3. But if we can see separately the bulb stone, we can go for T4 and we can go circumferentially around the bulb stone. We have many types of bulb stone, whether it is loose from one to uh, activation it will go or whether it will be attached firmly to the forcation like in this case as you can see and it is clear to us that the, the, the bulb stone on the forcation area again go circumferentially and uh, try to increase the power as much as needed 
if you can feel it is not cutting, increase. You can use it between six to eight. And pay attention, please pay attention to the activation pulses. No need to activate more than four to five seconds in order not to break it. By the way, it's a durable. The T3 and the T4 are durable ultrasonic tips. They don't break easily. But if you increase the power and work for a long time, for sure you will break it. And you can see also you can use it to finish the forcation area to remove any calcification. And you can see how was hidden canal under the attached. Uh, uh, bulb stone which was removed uh, conservatively because of the correct use of the T4 tip. Again, when we are doing a retreatment, we can see some composite restoration, we can see some cements. If we try to remove it with high speed, sometimes we will threaten the potential of a drilling in the forcation area. So I can I, I can use this T4. I can find it very beneficial in this uh, regards. Uh, you can activate all. You can see uh, directly in the uh, with your mirror. You can direct the tip because it gives you good visibility, as I told you before, and remove all the cements before going to the cataverca. And sometimes you know. Uh, when we are doing a retreatment, we can see that the previous dentist filled the bulb chamber with, with uh, gataberca. So here we need to remove them, not with rota rotary files, rotary uh, burrs. It is, it is better to remove them with the T4. Uh, they, so I will not also remove too much tooth structure very cervically, and I will not harm the forcation area. And in special cases also where we have larger canal filled of so many amount of gataberca we instead of using the rotary files we can remove them quickly using the t4 you can penetrate in the coronal part in the middle part of the canal by activating this will rise the heat and then you will insert it in the mass of the cataberca then you wait for cooling and you will be able to remove it in one shot sometimes it will be very beneficial and will it con will minimize the time for the retreatment. The ultrasonic T5, the one before the last, is actually a diamond coated. The T5 ultrasonic tip is diamond coated uh, with 40 micron uh, diamond uh, particles and it, is, it has a special design at the tip. It is very efficient and the tip size is 0.5 millimeters. Why 0.5 millimeters? Because mainly it is used to remove the fiber boosts. And we know that the fiber boost diameter is ranging between 0.8 to 1.2 or more than this than that. So we, we if we use the 0.5 size, and this was chosen for this, we will penetrate in the middle of the fiber post in order to facilitate the removal and then we will go circumferentially in order to remove there is in cement without further removal of the two structure inside the root canal this is the special design of the tip so the t5 is mainly uh, directed to, to remove the fiber post to remove the coronal obstacles actually and again t5 for woodpecker uh, units td5 for dte or satellite uh, units. As you can see here, I am inserting the tip of the T5 in the middle of the fiber post. And as you can see how much is if, if, uh, efficient, and you can see uh, again, don't forget to make pulses. If you increase the time pulses, you will break the tip. If you use the tips properly, it will last, believe me, for a long time and you will get benefits. See, in this few seconds, I was able to remove two to three millimeters coronally from the fiber post, making uh, sure of my direction of the, my hand in order to penetrate in the correct uh, path while I am activating. As you can see, don't forget to use the cooling uh, in order to minimize the heat accumulation. And actually this fiber boss was doing a perforation and you can see the exudate coming all around the fiber boss. Now, the remaining part of the fiber boss has not to be removed with T5. You have to shift whether for T1, which is the U file, or whether to shift for T6, which is the uh, the tip I'm going to speak now about it. Because whenever we are going deep inside, it's very important to use the smaller ultrasonic the sizes. And then after that, it is very important to minimize the power cycle. Also, sometimes we remove the fiber balls, but we still have some resin cement all around. It is very important to direct it circumferentially and again to see. 
you can use the loops you can uh, see in the coronal parts and better to use the microscope and you can activate as you can see here i'm breaking i'm differentiating between the colors of the dentine and the color of the resin cement and i'm directing my power with pulse time pulses i'm not exceeding too much the power in order not to break the, the, the ultrasonic tip and here you can see the cataberca which indicates and how much the walls are clean indicates that i totally removed all the materials foreign materials from the root canal and now i'm ready for the retreatment the last ultrasonic tip i'm going to speak uh, or in the kit is the t6 and it's directed to more sophisticated use of broken fire removal and the removal of the remaining of fiber balls inside the root canal it is designed as a thin uh, you can bend it it is sharp and it is one of very important uh, properties of the t6 and if even if it gets blunt you can resharp it again using the carborandum stones so you can use it for so many applications the tip size is 0.3 Again, the tip size of T1 is 0.3 and T1 and T2 and T6, they are 0.3. The tip size of the, the ultrasonic, the T3 is about 0.6, the T4 is 0.9 and the T5 uh, is 0.5. Uh, each size is designed for each special application. The T6... Uh, and T came from Talal, by the way. T6 ultrasonic tip, uh, TD6 for DTE, T6 for woodpecker. You can use it even in the apical area. Here you have to use the microscope in order to see the broken file. It's not indicated to remove a broken file if you are not able to see it. Sometimes in the coronal area with the loops, if it's superficial, you can start to drill. But deeper area, you have to use the microscope. Here I am trying to, uh, after I expose the tip with the T1, which I mentioned before, this is the same case. Here I'm using the T6 in order to make a contraclockwise rotation. It was a headstrom file about size 50 and which was broken with uh, twisting. So it was well engaged. I tried to use the loops. I was not successful. I tried to use any engaging uh, techniques. I was not successful. But here I was successful in rotating the, uh, the broken file contraclockwise because it was well engaged, as you can see. And I also direct the T6 in order to remove the obstacles all around. And you can see that the headstrom, which was well engaged in the walls of the canal was uh, successfully removed using the T6 ultrasonic tip. And this is the canal patent without, not, without any further removal of the tooth structure. And you can see that I was able to reach to the full working length. You can see how much it's sharp. And here I'm removing the apical part of the resin cement, the apical part of the fiber most. Again, very important to see inside the root canal in order to differentiate between the colors. And if you cannot, uh, if you are not able to differentiate, please, please uh, uh, make x-rays and uh, direct correctly your tip. And here I'm going circumferentially rather than penetrating. I will not remove any apical part unless I remove everything circumferentially. And this is, you can see, this is the remaining part. And you can see the glass fibers coming out from the fiber post indicating that I am drilling in the middle of the fiber post till I can see and I can clean and I can see that I'm going now deeper. Here I can shift for T1, for example, if I can see small traces in order to remove entirely the fiber posts. So again, the T1 is for canal refinement and the T2 and or canal or uh, access cavity opening the t2 for active irrigation irrigation activation the t3 is for uh, sorry the t1 is uh, the removal of the calcification and the removal of obstacles from the coronal part, part of the canal the t2 is for active irrigation irrigation activation and the t3 is for access cavity opening and refinement and calcification removal t4 for the bulb stone removal t5 
for the fiber post removal coronary and any calcification in the coronal part, T6 for removing the broken file and removing any apical uh, calcification. I will end up my presentation today with a clinical case to see how can we use many tips in one case in order to solve the problem of endodontically treated teeth. So you can here find that we have uh, incomplete root canal treatment with a uh, uh, casted post uh, and a space you will see you will su be surprised by the cause of this space and short obturation so we need to go for a root canal retreatment as you can see here i removed the crown and i have to remove now the remaining of the composite all around the the uh, cast boasted casted boast in order to uh, uncover it to make the removal more easy after that, one of the uses also of the T3 is the removal of the screws and removal also of casted boasts. But here you have to understand something very important. You need to increase the power and you need to apply powers from all the direction of the casted boast in order to loosen, to, to lose the, to break the cement that is catching the uh, casted boast. And don't forget to minimize the accumulated heat, as you can see here. Uh, and you go for uh, all the direction in order to break the cements, mesially, distally, puckily, and lingually, sometimes occlusally, to break the cements all around the casted boast and until the, the, the level that you will start uh, feel that it is moving. Why we use the T3? Because it has a huge mass of metal. This is a huge mass of metal will conduct more amount of uh, powers. As you can see, medially distally motion at the end, we were able to break the cement and we were able to remove it uh, in a way that we were, didn't uh, destroy the root. And this is the removed casted boast. And that was the space. You, uh, so many times you try to go after removal of the boast, you find the canal is blocked. You need to remove it. Here I'm using the U file, and also you can use. Uh, so uh, here I'm using the T1, and also you can use the T6. By the way, I'm removing the cement. I need to see the cataberca, but here I found a remaining part of the obturation material, which was cut when the dentist, previous dentist, was taking an impression for the casted boast, and this was the cause of the space between the cataberca and the casted boast. Again, I am here, I'm using the active irrigation in order to clean the walls of the canal. So you can use the T1, you can use the T2, you can use the T6, and you can use the T3 in order to remove the broken file. And you can see how much the canal walls were, were clean. Now we are, we are going for the retreatment. The techniques we know, you can go for with rotary files or you can heat the remaining part and you go with rotary file, it will be more easier. I recommend to use the tip of the system B to penetrate the cataberca and then you go with rotary files in order to remove the uh, remaining part of the cataberca as you can see here in this clinical case and the remaining part also can use the solvent and you will penetrate it and you go further step by step in order to remove all the ob obturation material. And please note how we were conservative in the removal of the casted boast. We didn't remove too much to structure. And this is the comfort. And this is the obturation with so many portals of exits. Uh, and uh, after obturation, this case was uh, obturated partially. It is good to clean the walls of the canal by T2, uh, ultrasonic tip. So you can see that we use T1. We can use the T6. T2 and T3 and T3 in one clinical case to get benefits of or to make us able to do the retreatment of the case. At the end of the presentation, I hope that uh, the application, you find it helpful in this kit. And if, if you use it, if you have any uh, comments, if you have any question, please do not hesitate to contact me. This is my all contacts, number, Facebook account, email uh, address, uh, please. I want to hear your uh, opinions. And I hope that you find most of your endodontic application uh, in this presentation. And thank you for listening. Uh, okay.
uh, do you have a, do we have any question Osborne we almost we will finish sorry at the beginning uh, for this technical problem actually it is out of control sometimes the internet will we have some problems in the internet if we have some questions please add it in the chat box I can see it uh, Osborne if not please uh, write it in the comments uh, add any uh, question you want we will answer you on the official post uh, on the page of Woodbaker to uh, have uh, to give you the answer if you have any clarification. So again, I will make a final summary. T1 is for um, uh, removing calcification from the coronal part. So many uses removing cements uh, while you are doing retreatment, exposing uh, the tip of the broken file, removing broken file sometimes. Uh, the T2 is for active irrigation and irrigation activation. I will describe it in the, my presentation. T3 for opening the bulb chamber and also the refinement of access cavity and also removing of screws and casted post. T4 for the removal of uh, bulb stones and the removal of uh, uh, attached bulb stone especially. Uh, and uh, the T4, T5 is for fiber post removal, coronally T6 for broken file removal and the uh, removal of broken file in the apical area. So, Kamal, a question from Kamal. Can we use the T1 in, in with E1? I didn't get your... Uh, uh, maybe you can, you can, you are asking me, can you use the stainless steel you file with the E1 holder from Woodbaker? Yes, you can use, but you have to be sure because the, the shank of the uh, stainless steel, they come with different sizes. Sometimes they are 0.7, sometimes they are 0.8. So if they, they are not, sometimes more, sometimes less. So they need to be 0.7 to 0.8 in order to be attached to the E1 or the T1, so you will be able to catch it. Because if you didn't catch it well with the uh, ultrasonic holder, you will be, as I told you, frustrated. You will feel that it is not cutting even if you increase the power setting. So it has to be attached. The, the U-file and the kits is compatible with the T1 holder, so it worked perfectly, as I told you. But don't forget not to increase the time of the activation. Uh, which device support which device support your kit DT or Woodbaker? Maybe you were not at the beginning of the presentation. I mentioned uh, Muhammad that we have both versions. We have the T1, T2, T3, till T6 series, which are compatible with Woodbaker, which means compatible with EMS devices, and you have the TD1, TD2, TD3 till the TD6. They are compatible with DTE. So D is for DTE. They are compatible with DTE, so they are compatible with satellite. So whenever you want to purchase this kit, uh, if you have an EMS, you go for Woodbaker. If you have a satellite, you purchase for DTE. Both versions are available in the market, but you have to contact each dealer for uh, each tip. Because as far as I know, they are not with the same dealers. Shortly, can we repeat the correct way of using the tips? I mean, the cooling and speed. Uh, actually, all the things they are mentioned in the user manual. And in the user manual also, you have a QR code. The QR code, you can go for most of the videos that you, you saw it in my presentation today. To see it more, to understand the use of it more, they are available to, to check them. But again, in a brief uh, revision or summary, uh, whenever you are using a smaller size, please follow the rule. Because at the end of the day, maybe you will not keep it in heart. You will not... Uh, you will not keep it in mind the, the 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 power you need. The rule is as follows: the smaller uh, the smaller uh, the tip, the less the power setting you have to use, and you increase gradually. And whenever you increase, please make the time pulses shorter. Very important. Minimize the time pulses if you increase the power to avoid the separation. Okay, very important. Whenever you use wider, 
size tips like T3, like T4, like T5, you can increase the power setting. But for the T2, which is the next question from Zainab now about T2, the T2, if you want to use it for active irrigation, you want to deliver liquids to clean everything from inside, you have to use minimum power setting from 2 to 4. If you want to use it for activation, you can increase till 6, till 8. But again, minimize the uh, time lapse or the, the pulses that you are using whenever you increase the power setting. I hope that you get my answer, dear friend. Uh, Zainab is asking about the T2 is contraindicated in open abexes. Uh, you have to understand something very important. Whenever we have open abex, it's more important to pay attention why we are irrigating with sodium hypochlorite. If you think that the active irrigation will be pushed out of the open, open abex, and make a, an accident, this is actually not correct because it does not have injection forces. The, the, because why? The liquids are coming from the top, not from the tip. Again, Zainab, when we have accident of sodium hypochlorite, this is because the delivery of sodium hypochlorite is coming from the tip, which was out of the apex. But here the liquids are from the, the sides, from up and from the sides. So whenever you go, even if you go with your tip, and thank you very much for your question, out of the apex in open apexes, the liquids will stop at the level of the uh, tissues and they will not penetrate out of the apex. I hope that I answered you, uh, Zainab, about the uses of TT. Two, in active irrigation, I, I think you, you meant to ask about active irrigation. Do we have another, uh, any uh, other question, my friend, or that's it? It seems there are no questions now, okay? So again, and at the end, I would like to thank you all for your uh, staying with me uh, for this one hour. I hope that the idea was very clear. And I hope to hear your feedback. And also, I would like to thank everyone for his interest in the kits. That I hope that it will help you in your practice. So please, let me hear your uh, remarks. If you find anything negative, if you find anything positive, please keep me updated. We can modify whatever is needed. And at the end, thanks for Wood Baker for supporting this project. And I hope to see your clinical cases soon with Dr. Talal Indokit. Till then, please stay safe and see you soon. And bye-bye for now.